The army always needs power trains to move stuff around, and such a need was shaping during the late 1940s, after the war in the Soviet Union. The OKB 500, in English the Experimental Design Berry 500, was working on a German Junkers Jumo 224 engine for an aircraft application. But then the Soviets decided to step up the numbers and went with their own 42 cylinder power unit. The thing about the Junkers engine is that it was a near ready German aircraft engine designed in a rhomboid shape with as many as 24 cylinders and 48 pistons, being an opposed piston multi crankshaft motor. However, as the Allied forces were reaching the manufacturing plant, the Germans would destroy nearly every technical sketch and plan in late April 1945. The engine was projected to make about 4,400 horsepower, 3,000 rpm, with a specific fuel consumption of 231 grams per kilowatt hour. The factory was captured and the Soviets continued developing the 224 since May 1946. However, the development would later move to Tushino, as would many German engineers, including the Junkers' chief engineer, Manfred Gerlach. With tooling that never arrived from Germany, it was a slow development, and the head of OKB 500, Vladimir M. Yakovlev, had other plans. He had his idea of a diesel aircraft engine that was named the Yakovlev M501. Yakovlev pursued his ambition and convinced Soviet officials that the M224 was a waste of time and resources and that the M501 had actual potential. The development of the Junkers 224 stopped in mid-1948 and no parts or mock-ups are known to exist. On the other hand, the M501 was first run four years after in 1952. The M501 could be described as one of the most insane piston engines ever in the world. It was designed as a water-cooled, four-stroke diesel 42-cylinder engine running a turbo and a supercharger together. It consisted of six rows of radial seven cylinders, or in other words, arranged in seven six-cylinder banks. These banks were fitted via studs to the aluminum crankcase, made of five middle and front and rear sections. This housed a crankshaft on seven roll-type main bearings and allowed for the even firing of cylinders every 17.14 degrees of revolution. The crankshaft design was similar to an inline 6 with throws spaced at the 0, 120, 240, 240, 120 and 0 degrees. Pistons running in cast and pressed in liners were connected to the master and slave type of conrods and heads were operated by bevel gears and vertical shafts in the rear crankcase section. Those would then drive a single overhead cam and 24 valves per head, that's 168 valves in total. It accommodated a crossflow head with the exhaust collectors at the upper part of the V and the intakes at the lower part. The exhaust would then continue to the turbo, pressurizing air for a further boost in the supercharger. The turbo located at the very end of the engine was powerful enough to provide an additional thrust of 2.45 kN to an aircraft. With 160mm bores and 170mm stroke, it added up to a displacement of 143.6 litre and a power of 4,750 horsepower without a turbo, with the turbo attached. The power went up to 6,200 horsepower and the weight was 3,400 kilograms. However, the engine never powered an aircraft. Being a similar case to the US made 28 cylinder was major, turbine engines were becoming a thing in the aeronautical industry and crushing piston engines in simplicity and efficiency. 
Neither of the intended aircraft, such as the Tupolev 487, Ilyushin EL-26 and Tupolev 489 went beyond development and after such an effort expanded, the Soviets would not want to scrap the idea of a highly powerful engine. They decided to marinize it, named it the M503 and many aluminum parts were swapped for steel ones. Early suffering from various issues, the engine has been fairly reliable since the 1960s and is known as Zvezda, or star in English, due to the engine's shape. It was basically the same engine, with a compounded turbocharger. Any excess boost over 1.09 bar would help turn the engine thanks to the fluid coupling of the compressor wheel to the crankshaft. With a compression ratio of 13 to 1, it made a peak power of 3940 horsepower at 2200 rpm at a specific fuel consumption of 226 grams per kilowatt hour and a weight of 5.5 tons. However, the development wouldn't end there and a 56 cylinder 191.4 liter Zvezda M504 with 8 cylinder banks was made as well. Breathing through 224 valves, it produced 5,160 horsepower and weighed over 7.2 tons. And to make it even more extreme, they paired two 56 cylinders into a single 112 cylinder M507 Monster, making about 10,500 horsepower at 2000 rpm and weighing 17 tons. All these engines eventually ended up in OSA class Project 205 fast missiles and other kinds of ships and are still produced, repaired and developed at the Zvesta factory in St. Petersburg. Such a missile ship would take three of them but required an engine removal when any of them was up to a service. If you ever find yourself in Sri Lanka, there is one showcased in a naval museum in Trincomalee. Thanks to a German tractor pulling team, Dragonfire, we can imagine the ludicrous sound of this 42 cylinder Soviet beast in spark ignited version. It uses custom heads, burns methanol, and makes 10,000 horsepower with a supercharger only. That big thing up front is a throttle bar. 